Hey basketball fans, this offseason is sneaking up on us and if you're ready for it to get going, what I want you to do is scroll down below this video and hit that big thumbs up, give us a like. And if you're not ready, I don't know, tell us no in the comments section, but I'm pretty sure you're as ready as I am. So what I want you to do is give this video a like if you're ready for the offseason to officially get going. Now, the first rumor here on today's show revolves around LaMarcus Aldridge to the Golden State Warriors. Aldridge has a one-year deal with $24 million left on it. The guy is 35 years old, and besides, despite the fact that people are like, ah, he's always hurt, he only missed 10 games last season. Now, this report is coming via Zach Lowe. He asked around about the Golden State Warriors' second pick and what they might do with it. And people said that they're talking about swapping the second pick and salary, which is basically Andrew Wiggins, for LaMarcus Aldridge and the number 11 pick. So this is the deal that Zach Lowe has been hearing about in NBA circles. Aldridge, 11, and 41 going to the Warriors in exchange for Andrew Wiggins and the number two overall pick. Now, before I tell you why I'm kind of scratching my head at this idea, I want to make sure you subscribe to our Warriors channel on youtube.com slash Warriors TV. We're posting daily on that channel at this point. So what I want you to do is go subscribe and let us know if you have subscribed. It's honestly so much fun because the Warriors are going to have a crazy offseason. So whether you're a Warriors fan or just a basketball fan, that is a channel that you want to be a part of this offseason. Now let's talk about LaMarcus Aldridge, right? 53 games played this last season, which doesn't seem like a lot, but because of the shortened season, that only meant that he missed 10 games. 81 games played the year before that, 75 the year before that, and 72 the year before that, consistently scoring 17-plus points per game, 23 points per game back in 2017-18, and a pretty solid rebounder and finisher around the rim with his field goal percentage up above 50% in two of those four last years. But then you look at the targets at number 11, and assuming they would get that pick in this trade package, you could look at a guard slash a wing like Devin Vassell. You could take a guy with a lot of upside like Patrick Williams. Sadiq Bey is a guy that we know the Golden State Warriors are interested in. Aaron Neesmith, an elite shooter and perhaps an underrated defender. And then maybe you want to back up to Steph Curry. Cole Anthony's probably going to be available at number 11. Let's say this trade goes through. Let's say the Warriors do it. Now you have LaMarcus Aldridge as your starting center. Draymond Green is your power forward. You don't really have a true starting wing anymore, so you go with Sadiq Bey. And you, of course, have the Splash Brothers in the backcourt with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Here's the deal, guys. The Warriors don't really have a great wing. Andrew Wiggins is probably going to be their starting forward. So giving up the number two pick, who's going to be a guy like maybe an Anthony Edwards or maybe a James Wiseman that could start at center already plus Andrew Wiggins, who's going to be your starting small forward, does not make sense when you're trading for a guy like LaMarcus Aldridge, who's 35 years old, and you're trading all the way down to number 11. It doesn't make a lot of sense for the Golden State Warriors. Now, would the Spurs be ecstatic? I'm sure they would. Warriors, not so much. I think they're saying no. I think this buzz that Zach Lowe is hearing might be a smokescreen. I wouldn't buy into that trade idea all that much. But I want you guys to pick one or the other. Now, the better player right now is LaMarcus Aldridge. I'll admit it. He's just better than Andrew Wiggins is at this point. But Wiggins has higher upside, and he fits more of a need for the Golden State Warriors. So who would you rather have? Type LMA for LaMarcus Aldridge or type AW for Andrew Wiggins. If I'm the Golden State Warriors, I'm holding on to Andrew Wiggins, and I'm holding on to the number two pick, not trading it away for a 35-year-old LaMarcus Aldridge. Serge Ibaka has been in the middle of a lot of offseason rumors this past, uh, this past weekend, and according to Sean Devini, there are multiple teams that are beginning to show interest in the 31-year-old big man playing for the Toronto Raptors. Now, the Raptors definitely want to bring him back, but they're not the only team that is showing interest in the guy who really is still a great rim protector and also a great three-point shooter at this point in his career. Been pretty consistent over the past four years, averaging around 15 points per game and eight rebounds. Again, a good shot blocker still for the Toronto Raptors, although that took a little bit of a backseat this past offseason. Now, five of the six teams that were mentioned by Sean Devini in this article were the Boston Celtics, the Dallas Mavericks, the LA Clippers, LA Lakers, and the Miami Heat. Celtics, I think, are the team that could use Serge Ibaka the most with a guy like Daniel Tice in the middle. Might want a little bit of an upgrade. The Dallas Mavericks, they want an older veteran. He could make some sense. The Clippers, 
If they lose Montrez, I guess sure. The Lakers make some sense if they lose Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee, but it doesn't look like they're going to. And then there's the Miami Heat. I think the Celtics, the Miami Heat, would be the two best fits for Serge Ibaka, but I think he might just stay in Toronto. I think that gives him a good chance to win right now and also gives him a true role. But which team do you think Ibaka should sign with? Not which team do you think should sign Ibaka, but which team do you think would be best for him to choose? Let me know in the comment section. Scroll on down. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. And you're probably going to get a YouTube ad break here. So all you got to do is scroll on down and reply to the pinned comment. Let's talk about Spencer Dinwiddie of the Brooklyn Nets. Brian Windhorst says that the Nets could be interested in including Spencer Dinwiddie in a trade package if it's the right trade package. Now, Dinwiddie became a bit of an underrated player this offseason or this past season because no Kyrie Irving, no Kevin Durant, and really like half the team was out during the NBA bubble. Meanwhile, Dinwiddie still put up big numbers. 21 points per game, 7 assists. Not a great 3-point shooter, but he is an efficient scorer from around the mid-range and finishing around the rim. Plus, he's still just 27 or 28 years old, so the guy is a little bit younger than he looks. If you look at that picture, you think he's some guy's 40-year-old uncle, but he's not really that old. He's a solid player. Now, when Windhorse says the right trade package, I believe that it's a trade package including Drew Holiday because that is a guy the Nets are very interested in. In. Now, I'm not sure if this trade gets it done on Brooklyn's side. I think they'd want a little bit more than just Dinwiddie and Torian Prince and a couple draft picks. I think they'd also like a Jarrett Allen mixed in there besides Torian Prince. But if you're the Brooklyn Nets, or excuse me, yeah, if you're the Brooklyn Nets, this is a, this is a trade that you do 100 times out of 100. Kyrie. Drew Holiday, you get to hold on to Karis LeVert, who can become really a fourth star now in this system. You start Jared Allen, who is better than DeAndre Jordan is at this point, and you get back Kevin Durant. So even if Kevin Durant is maybe, let's say, 75% of what he was before he tore his Achilles, you still have an all-star point guard in Kyrie Irving, an all-NBA-level defender in Drew Holiday, and Karis LeVert, who is a budding star on the offensive end of the floor. I like this team a lot, and if it means giving up Spencer Dinwiddie, I absolutely think the Brooklyn Nets should do this. However, I think the Nets should be very, very careful with what they're doing about Dinwiddie because he did a lot for this Brooklyn team, and he has a player option next offseason. If he wants to screw them over and just leave for nothing, he could very well do that. Now, speaking of the Brooklyn Nets, if you want to get one of these awesome throwback Nets jerseys, go to chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys, the best place to go for all the retro uniforms that are coming out, all the new styles that are coming out, and they're all shipping for free for a limited time only. Whoever your favorite player is, whoever your favorite team is, they have those jerseys available today on Fanatics. Even the most obscure players you can think of, I promise they have that jersey available. Go to chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. Pick out your favorite one. Pick out your favorite player. Pick out your favorite team. And you can get them there. And you can get them shipped to your home for free for a limited time only. Take advantage of this while you can at chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. Let's talk about the Milwaukee Bucks because they are reportedly ready to take on salary if it means they can take Bogdan Bogdanovich away from the Sacramento Kings. Now, Harrison Barnes has a three-year deal with $60 million left on it, and the Bucks have said, hey, if you give us Bogdanovich, we will take on that salary. So it would have to be a sign-in trade for Bogdanovich, but it would look something like this. Bogdanovich and Barnes, which is two kind of big contracts, assuming Bogdanovich makes around 10 to 12 million. Then you have to give up Eric Bledsoe because that's the only way this works with the money. You got to give up Dante DiVincenzo because that's the only way the Kings are even interested in it is if you include a young asset. Dragon Bender and DJ Wilson are kind of throw-ins in this deal. The 24th overall pick is a nice piece along with a second round pick in 2022. But the real prize of this for the Bucks is not Harrison Barnes. It's Bogdan Bogdanovich, a restricted free agent who they are very much interested in bringing on this offseason to help Giannis win right now. And if he says, hey, I will sign with you, Sacramento, if you trade me to the Bucs, that's the only way it's going to make this happen. You don't lose assets. In fact, you get assets back. You got to do it. And if you're Milwaukee, I know Harrison Barnes is a big contract, but he's still a good player. He's still a 15-point-per-game guy that is a solid NBA defender, and he kind of rounds out your starting five a little bit better. I think you start this lineup, you don't really have a true point guard in there, and you roll with the playmaking abilities of Bogdanovich and Giannis to get you the assist and the passing you need. You have sharp shooting from Middleton and Bogdanovich and Brooke Lopez, and Harrison Barnes can be a good 
tertiary or secondary score for this Milwaukee team. I mean, the depth definitely takes a hit because you lose Dante DiVincenzo, but if your starting five looks like that, there's going to be guys that sign for the veterans minimum that are like, I'll play with you guys regardless. I don't really care. So I'm all in if I'm the Bucks. I'm trading away Bledsoe if it means getting Bogdanovich and Harrison Barnes. I think it's more than worth it, but you guys can let me know if they say yes or no to that trade. Now, you made it all the way to the end of the video. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate those of you that stayed this long. So if you did, what I want you to do is like this video, assuming you have subscribed, because it really goes hand in hand. I know that those of you that have stayed all 10 minutes of this video have subscribed already. So let us know that you've subscribed by hitting that like button. We want to see how many of you actually have. And if you haven't already, go to youtube.com slash chat sports TV, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you turn on your notifications because guess what? The offseason is a little over a week away.